And I'm reading from the third chapter of Acts. I want you to listen very closely as I read from the first verse. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Those words kind of jumped out at me. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something, expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. You killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Bow your hearts and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of the Holy Scriptures. And I pray that the unction of the Holy One shall come upon us tonight. Let the anointing of God 
mantle every soul under this tent. Let faith come alive tonight as the Word of God is preached. Don't allow one soul to leave this place disappointed, but let them leave here tonight knowing that they receive what they've come for. Let an expectancy come alive, expecting to receive something from God. Abolish all fears and doubts and every trace of unbelief and move us into that place where we can rest on your word, knowing that it's done. If there's any here that know you not, Holy Spirit, bring them to the bleeding side of Calvary tonight. Fill believers with the Spirit, and we'll be careful to praise you for everything, for we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody shouted amen, amen and amen. I am reading from the third chapter of Acts, and I'm going to use as a text this 16th verse, and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know, Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This is Peter the spokesman who is relating this incident that took place immediately after the advent of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost had come on 120 in an upper room. Peter stood up and preached, and 3,000 more were born into the kingdom of God that comprised that church. And here in this particular chapter of the book of Acts, we have a record of what two men have accomplished just by using the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. I said there's power in that name. And I want to title this message tonight, Healing Power of that name. The healing power of that name. The name of Jesus. Jesus had just departed the scene. He left his disciples, but he told them to go and wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. And he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and all Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Did he say so? Power. Now the... The only thing that the disciples have is the power of that name. Jesus is no longer with them in bodily form, but thank God the Holy Ghost came. Jesus said, the Holy Ghost cannot come until I go and send him to you. And in that upper room, when that Holy Ghost came, it was a heavenly telegram to the entire world that Jesus made it in, and he sat down at the right hand of God the Father, who acts as our high priest, and he said, whatever you ask the Father now in my name, he will give it to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I kind of like this. This is the first miracle that we find recorded after the advent of the Holy Ghost. Jesus just ascended into heaven, 
Jesus went about doing good. He didn't have to use his name. He was there in person. He healed everything that moved. Everything that came to him, he healed the sick. He opened blind eyes. He unstopped the deaf ears. He made the lame to walk. He cast out devils. He even raised the dead. Women couldn't even have a burial service when he was around. Because why? Because of the mighty power of Almighty God that was wrapped up in that body. But he is not dead. He he is alive and he lives in the church today and he's the same today as he was yesterday you try to put yourself in the shoes or the sandals of these two men I mean it's time for prayer now Jesus just departed are you listening to me and the only thing that they have is his last words go to Jerusalem and wait Wait for the promise of the Father, and you shall receive power. The works that I do shall you do also. And not only these works shall you do, but greater works shall you do, because I go to my Father. This is the thing that was burning in their heart. They had something from God. They believed what they were doing. And here, while they were going into that temple, they saw a man begging for alms. Now, I dare say that man sat there when Jesus walked by. He never healed him. Jesus been in that temple. I kind of believe Jesus saved it for them boys. How are you listening to me? Preachers, I believe this is a good way to look at it. God has called us to do His works. And when that Holy Ghost came, He didn't come with two gifts to have the church looking for seven more. But I mean everything that Jesus had came in those disciples in that upper room. They had the anointing of the Holy Ghost that destroyed that yoke. And when they saw that man that was crippled, He said, and I love the way Peter said it, Look on us! My God, that's bold. Look on us! Jesus may be gone, but His representatives are here. We represent Him here. Oh, I love it! He represents us there. He is our high priest there. But we represent Him here. What would Jesus do if he met this situation? If Jesus were here, what would he do to that crippled man? The same thing Peter did. Look on us! I tell you, that's the kind of preacher I want to listen to. This preacher sounds like he, he believes what he's doing. Now, most preachers are dry as dust. You can tell they don't believe what they're preaching. But I like to listen to somebody that believes what they're preaching. They've been impressed with Christ. I mean, something happened to them. They believe this thing. And when they saw that man that was a cripple, look on us. And all he said was expecting to receive an alm. I mean, this man was placed there. He was a hopeless cripple for 40 long years. And his mama laid him at that gate. Why? Because church folks will be merciful to you. And every time they pass that cripple, they're going to stick something in his pot. I mean, he had the perfect spot. But here comes two Pentecostal preachers. Holy Ghost filled preachers. Two preachers just got the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? It's the time of prayer. And Peter says, look on us. He said, I don't have what you want, but I got what you need. Hallelujah. That world out there need what you have. You're part of the church. God's given it to you, and he wants you to impart it to somebody. Are you listening to me? Don't keep it to yourself. This Holy Ghost isn't given to you just to make you feel good, just to make you shake your hand. But God's given you that Holy Ghost so you can impart it to somebody that's in need. Go open a blind eye. Un 
Don't stop a deaf ear. Make a lamb, lame man walk. Let the world know we have what Jesus had. It's the Holy Ghost that has come upon us. Can you shout praise the Lord? Is it silver and gold? Have I, have I none? Now, I looked up another rendition of this. And such as I have doesn't do it justice. Like what he has is secondary to silver and gold. Silver and gold have I none, but another translation says, but what I have give I unto you. I like that. Hallelujah. I may not have what you're looking for. I may not have the silver and gold, the standard of this world, but I have what you need. It's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It dwells in me, and in His name I command you, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, hallelujah. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me. I'm beginning to feel this, folks. And I'm getting hot now. I was going to give you a little fireside chat tonight. Oh, the anointing's here tonight. I'll tell you, it's all over this place, folks. You in this wheelchair, you better not hang in there long enough, brother. I want to see you jump out of that thing and start running like his lame man did. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, folks. Just turn around. Just turn around and look at somebody and say, you're going to get a miracle tonight. Oh, hallelujah. I'm reading from that third chapter of Acts. Verse number 16. Let me read it to you. And his name, this is Peter, after the flat fact, explaining what was accomplished. What's already been done? And he says, in his name... Through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. First thing I want to talk to you about is the power of that name. The name of Jesus. Jesus is the one they put on the cross. They refused him as the Messiah. Now, I don't mind telling you twice. I read this earlier to you. But twice it's mentioned, and this is Peter talking. He said in verse 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him. And verse 14 says, but you denied the Holy One. This is Peter using the word denied, talking to his fellow Jews, and here he's using the word deny, and just a couple months ago, Peter's the one that denied him. And here he is under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, using the word deny, and it's coming right back at him. In other words, he's saying, what you are, I used to be. <laughs> Hallelujah! And what he's letting them know is, if God can change my life, he'll change your life. I don't care whether you denied him or not. Hallelujah. You left a murderer go 
free and you crucified the king of glory. Ain't nobody preached like this. And his name through faith in his name, the name of Jesus. Oh, he's not talking about just accumulation of some letters together that formulate a name. There's more taken into consideration when he uses this in the name. When he said to that crippled man for 40 long years, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's more in that than just the name of Jesus. We don't use that name like a magician uses the name of Abracadabra. Shoot. But a lot of people, when they come into church, they think that there's a magical something to that name. But I want you to know there's nothing magical about that name. But there's something that's embodied in the name of Jesus. It takes His humanity and His Messiahship and His divinity. This is God in the flesh. A hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. This is the Messiah. And Peter is trying to let them know you denied your only Messiah and turned Him over to that judgment hall. And you had a murderer released. You denied your own Messiah. Messiah, the one that you've been looking for, but faith in his name, you didn't kill him, he died willingly. What he's letting them know, there's not a Jew dead or alive could kill Jesus. There's not a Jew dead or alive that could kill Jesus. The Roman soldier's spear didn't kill Jesus. The nails in his hands, the crown of thorns did not kill him. He said, this one thing I received from my Father. He gave me power to lay my life down. And He gave me power to take it back up again. I want you to know this is the Messiah. This is the divinity of God. This is God in the flesh. The name of Jesus. He has given it to His church. And we operate with that name there's power in that name and I said I like the way Peter so boldly I mean he's in cow down to the world out on the street corner look on us we want to do it behind closed curtains we are ashamed of that name while that world uses it as a curse, they curse his name, use it in the form of a curse, but we use that name to open blind eyes. There's a girl came in here Sunday afternoon with her father, 21 years of age, who was a deaf mute that never heard a word and she never spoke a word. And she got in this prayer line. We laid hands on everybody that was sick or diseased or tormented. And when she came, I saw the Father using sign language on her. And I said, how long has she been like this? 21 years. Preacher never heard a word. Put my fingers in her ears. And I could feel the anointing come on me. And I said, you foul, deaf, and dumb spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you come out instantly bird instantly I felt that spirit slide out by my finger my God I knew that girl could hear for the first time in 21 years that girl heard I taught her how to speak God opened her ears and loosed her tongue what am I trying to tell you man can't do it but it's by the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus that still powerful today Woo. there's something about that name folks this isn't only just for the clergy to use Jesus said these signs shall follow them that believe hallelujah how many believers I got here 
And why don't you use that name? My God, it's about time we ought to clean out the hospitals. Let the devil know God's got a church. Can you shout amen? Hear me. I know the church started off in a blaze of glory. The power of God was demonstrated. They went everywhere. Those disciples healed the sick. They cast out devils and raised the dead. But the church has lost everything that God poured out on the day of Pentecost. But the church is coming back. I said the church is coming back. Can you shout amen? We're not what we used to be. Thank God there ain't no big preachers anymore. But God's raising up an army of believers. God's got a body that's coming together. That's waiting on Him. We're going forth in the name of Jesus. I said we're acting in His stead. We're here in the name of Jesus. And we're going to do what He would do if He were here. Power in that name. I said, there's power in that name. In the name of Jesus. You that are listening to this radio, don't you turn it off. I'm excited. I said, I'm excited. Every time I talk about this name, I get excited. He's given us church. He's given us His name. The name that's above every name. The name of Jesus. Every knee has to bow. Are you listening to me? I said it's a name that's above every name. What is it you have? Arthritis? His name is above that. What is it you have? Sugar diabetes? What name is it? Name it. Sugar diabetes? The name of Jesus is above sugar diabetes. The name of Jesus is above high blood pressure. The name of Jesus is above crippled spirits. The name of Jesus is above whatever you're carrying in your body. The name of Jesus is above every other name. No matter what it has, how the devil has you in bondage, this is your night to be liberated. This is your night to be set free. The name of Jesus is coming alive and it's going to put the sickness down. Raise your hands and shout amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just love that name. Every time. Every time I reach out and get a hold of my wife's hand, automatically I say, in the name of Jesus. Everything I touch, I say, in the name of Jesus. God called me to lay hands on the sick. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick in my name. 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 And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise them up. Look at somebody say, I got something in that hand. I got something in that hand. My God, this place jumping now. My God, I'm feeling this tonight. Mm. I had a preacher. I had a preacher tell me, I don't have anything. I, have. I said, don't you ever put it on me. I've got something in my hand. I've got something in my feet. I've got something in me. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Shout yes. Woo. 
I wish you'd all sit down and leave me alone. Woo! Lord, this feels good, folks. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm reading from this third chapter of Acts. I don't believe I'll ever get out of it. Verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Power of that name. Number two, how the power of that name comes to operate. How do you operate it? I've laid hands on the sick in the name of Jesus and nothing happened. Notice everybody ain't jump, jumping now. All us preachers know, you know all what, you all know what I mean, don't you? We've all done this. I've seen, I laid hands on cripples, they get up and walk. I've hand, laid hands on other cripples, they stay where they are. I laid hands on blind eyes, they open. I've laid hands on blind eyes, and they don't open. Don't turn the radio off. Keep it on. How do we operate this thing? How can we make it work? It's not you. We don't work the miracle. Jesus is the miracle worker. Jesus is the one. There's three things that are involved in this. The man, the cripple, the name, and faith. Those three things. And it's all wrapped up in what I just read. The people in that temple are filled with wonder and amazement because many of them put a coin in his little bucket before they came to church. Now they see him leaping and shouting and praising God. Some of them could be a visitor from another city. And they'll see him. That, that's a man I gave that quarter to. That phony can walk. He wasn't even sick. Look at him acting up in church. And I gave him a quarter. But not the people that lived in that city. They knew this man. They knew that boy's mother. For the past 30 years, she put him there. But something happened. And they want to know what happened. And Peter says, you killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name, hath made this man strong in the presence of you all. Now, Peter believed in that name. He believed in what he was doing. I know not, ev not everybody lays hands on the sick. Why? Because they don't believe it. But when you believe it, there's something about that name. Peter believed it. He had faith. Now, it would be presumption on my part to say that the man got healed on Peter's faith alone. Because I've read early in your hearing tonight, when Peter fastened his eyes on him with John, he said, look on us. And then the scripture says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. You can't put this all on God. You've got 
to have faith yourself. You've got to believe God for yourself. You've got to learn how to trust God for yourself. And you've got to live for God and make up your mind. You're going to walk after Him. You're going to keep His commandments. You're going to keep His statutes. You're going to be obedient unto His voice. And then when the man of God lays hands on you, you know you're going to be healed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I know what I'm talking about. I had a man get in my prayer line in North Carolina. Tobacco country. That's where they grow it. Had cancer of the throat. And he had a big package of cigarettes in his pocket. And he wants me to pray for him and ask God to heal him. I said, I ain't praying for you. That's why I'm not a pastor. They'd have got rid of me a long time ago. I'm an evangelist. I come to hitch and run. I looked at him and I said, you got cancer? You know where it came from, don't you? Them cigarettes. And I reached in his pocket and I said, give me them. He grabbed my hand. If he had a knife, he'd have cut it off. He said, you ain't getting them cigarettes. I said, that's the thing's called your cancer, dummy. What do you want God to heal you for? How many packs do you smoke a day? Two. You want God to heal you, give you a new throat, so you can smoke four packs a day. I ain't praying for you. You're going to die. You got cancer. And I said, if you don't want to die from cancer, double up on them cigarettes, and then you'll die with a heart attack. Oh, that's rough, isn't it? Look on us! Never expected anything. I said, what are you doing here? He said, somebody told me you're a healer. I said, I ain't no healer. I couldn't heal a flea if it had a headache. Peter said, don't you look on us as if by our holiness we made this man to walk. Oh, no. There ain't but one healer. It's Jesus. And if he's going to heal you, then he wants you to serve him. He's not going to heal your body and make you well so you can do a better job of serving the devil with that body. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and God demands something out of you. He wants your life. And he wants, he's looking for somebody who will be obedient to that word. Hallelujah. I made up my mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. I said, I made up my mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. And then when trouble comes, I can go to the man of God. There's nothing between me and God. And I know when he lays hands on me, I'm going to receive the miracle. Devil, you are a liar. When the man of God prays, I'm going to be healed. God cannot lie. This man knows what he's talking about. And I'm going to believe what God said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Immediately, his ankle bones receive strength. Raise your hands and shout, praise the Lord. Immediately. When did he get it? Immediately. Don't you try to take that out of the book. Immediately. Immediately. I believe we ought to start preaching this more often. When do I expect to get this preach? Right now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't tell them to come back tomorrow and get saved. You get them saved right now. Now is the accepted time. Today's the day of deliverance. You don't have to come back to get your miracle. You can get it now. Why? The miracle worker is here. Walking up and down the aisles, in and out of the chairs. Jesus is here. Woo. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. I'm reading from the third chapter of Acts, verse 16. I hope I get done with this. Listen, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The power of the name, and how the power of that name comes to operate. And thirdly, the effects of power of that name. What are the effects of it? When that power is operating. But before I get into that, 
Let me back up just a little bit to that second point. The need is not for me to stand up here and instruct you. That's been our problem in this generation. We write books on seven steps to healing. And you read it, memorize it, and you're still sick. Don't y'all get mad at me now. And I even have some books on healing. But the need is not to instruct you. The need that I see as the man of God that stands behind this pulpit is to impress you that I believe what I'm talking about and preach it in such a manner that I get excited about it. I wouldn't listen to anybody that's not exciting. When you get impressed with Christ, Peter was impressed with him. He denied him, but he got impressed with him. And Peter was the one, he and John, who worked that first miracle. Look on us! My God, that's bold. And then after he says, look on us, he said, don't you look at us. As if by our own power and our holiness we made this man to walk. First of all, he said, look on us. And I said, don't look on us. Peter, just like we are. But you want people to be impressed. To be excited about this thing. Can you shout praise the, praise the Lord somebody? Now in that, 16th cha- in that 16th verse, it says, And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. Man, I like that. This is the effects of the power of that name. You don't have to rely on the testimony of somebody that'll stand up here and say, God healed me. You can see it with your own eyes. You can tell. When God gets this man out of this wheelchair, he won't have to testify. You'll all be climbing poles because you're here. That's what I'm talking about. And let me go a little further. When God heals your body, it can defy the scrutiny of any medical doctor. You don't have to be afraid to go to a doctor and say, look what God did. You told me I have a cancer, now check me out again, and you're going to find out it ain't there no longer because He is my great physician and He has healed my body. Hallelujah! He made him strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness. There's two things. Made him strong and then gave him perfect soundness. Are you listening to me? And it all happened progressively immediately I'm, I'm trying to excite you tonight I said I'm trying to excite you tonight God has no half cures I said God has no half cures when God does something he does it complete when God heals you, He not only makes your body strong, but He makes you whole. Can you shout amen, somebody? I'm talking about a God that loves you and gave you a promise of what He would do, and He's looking for somebody who will believe what He said. I believe it. I said, I believe His Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you want him to do for you? What do you want him to do for you tonight? I ask some people, what do you want God to do for you? Anything he wants to. Boy, do I like to get them in my line. I stopped one young man. I said, what do you want God to do for you? Anything he wants. I laid hands on him. I said, Lord, kill him. He said, I don't want him to kill me. I said, then what do you want him to do? 
He said, I see what you mean. Most of us, we're so weak, all we can holler is, have mercy, Lord. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Have mercy, Lord. You ain't asking for nothing. Long as you breathe and he's having mercy. Long as you got breath in them lungs, he's having mercy. What do you want? I said, what do you want? Lord, heal me of this cancer. God, deliver me from this foul devil. Be exact. Let God know what you want. Let him know you believe it. When the man of God lays hands on me, I'm going to have my miracle. Tonight is my night. My blind eyes are going to open. My deaf ears going to unstop. My crippled body is going to be made whole. Tonight's my night. Why? Because Jesus is here. Hallelujah. His name through faith in his name hath made this man strong and given him perfect soundness. Where? In the presence of y'all. Hallelujah. 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 God doesn't have to do it in a back room somewhere. He can do it right out in front of the public. He can do it out on a sidewalk. He can do it on the job, wherever you are. When you're selling them automobiles, you can put that power to work right out there on the car lot. Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah. With all the demons of hell around you, snarling at you, hissing at you, but you have the authority of the name of Jesus. You can put it to work in your own home, out on the street, and in your own church. Raise your hands and shout amen. That's the effects of it, folks. Put it to work. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say it out loud. Jesus. I said out loud. Jesus. How can you say that three times and just sit there like a wart on a pickle? My God, there's power in that name. Every demon has to fall down at the mention of that name. Can you shout amen? amen. Power. In the name of Jesus. And this is the badge that Christ has given us to wear. He represents us there before the Father. But we represent Him here. When I meet a cancer victim, I meet him like Jesus would. What would He do if He were here? He'd heal them. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be well. And by faith, it's done. Raise your hands and shout, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Stand to your feet and shout with me, folks. I'm done. Oh, hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. 20 minutes ago, you told somebody... You're going to get a miracle tonight. Turn around that same person and say, uh-uh, tonight's my night for the miracle. I'm the one getting this thing tonight. In the name of Jesus. I'm expecting. I'm expecting to receive. I'm expecting to receive. I'm expecting to receive. Bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, let miracles take place tonight. I know tomorrow's special miracles, but let them take place tonight. We don't have to put this thing off till tomorrow. We can get it now. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose the people. Lord, you said what I loose here, you loose there. Holy Spirit, 
draw men and women to the bleeding side of Calvary tonight. While you stand there, nobody moving for two minutes, please. You that are listening to this tape, you can come to a place in your own experience where you can know without a shadow of a doubt that you have passed from death unto life. I'm not talking about religion. You can have religion and go to hell with it. Jesus said you must be born again. I'd like to have the pleasure of praying with you tonight. You can have your name on every church book in Atlanta and still go to hell and be bound. And you hold the key in your decision. God sends nobody to hell and he'll never force anybody to serve him. But yet you, you are the one that initiates the miracle. He said, to as many as received him, you must receive him. You either receive him or you reject him. That's how simple it is. And to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He said, he or she that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast him out. He said, if you confess your sin, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You see where you initiate it. God's already done everything that he's accomplished. He ain't going to do no more. He's already done it. He's waiting for us to react. If you want my prayer tonight, and you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God, you'd like to come to him. I don't care how many times you tried and failed. You can come to him tonight. He's waiting for you right now to come. I'm going to count to three. If you want my prayer, throw your hand up when I say three. I want you to think about it. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in this place. I don't care how many times you tried and failed. Every one of us have been a miserable failure. But thank God he didn't give up on us. He's waiting for you tonight. Here's the first one. Remember, three will be your signal. Here's the first one. Here it is. One. Counting down to eternity. Where will you spend it? In heaven or hell? It's your choice. God sends nobody to hell. We send ourselves by rejection. We reject God. Here's the second one. Two. Get your hand ready. All over this place. All over this place. Every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, if you want Christ to come into your life, I want you to throw your hand up. Get your hand ready. Here's your signal all over this place. Here it is. Three. Shoot it up quick. Quick, quick, quick. All over this place. God bless your heart. Every one of you have your hands raised. Look at me, please. Be a man about it. Be a woman about it. Let God know you're not ashamed. Get out of your seat and come down here and stand. Right before me and let the world know you're not ashamed to stand before God. All over this place, we're waiting for you. Sing the song, Bill. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. He's waiting for you. Give him your life today. Come to Jesus. Let him have his way. This is your miracle tonight. Give him your life. Give him your life today. Come unto Jesus. Let him have his way. Sing it again, Bill. 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 Sing it again, Bill.
reading from the 37th Psalm, and I'm going to use this as a text, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. I'm not preaching to you tonight, I'm preaching to me. I don't like to wait. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. You can mark it down that God is a deliverer. Mark it down. This is the end result. That's the reason why I am reading this particular verse as a text. God's desire for all of his people is that they might have rest. Rest is a synonymous term. It also means peace. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. I believe that God wants every one of us to learn how to find this peace and this rest. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. Now, if you're not a child of God, forget it. You'll never have rest. I'll get to you a little later on. But I'm talking to people of God now. God doesn't want any one of us to be disturbed. Fear should not be a part of our life. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. This is the spirit that he gives to us. And I believe David is writing out of a heart of experience how he begins this particular psalm when he says, fret not. David didn't have rest, but he found it. You don't have rest now, but you're going to find it. You are troubled on every side. The devil has your back against the wall. The medical profession has given you up, but you are not finished yet. God has rest for his children when you learn how to put this into practice. Fret not. David is crying from his heart, letting every one of us know and come to understand that we have no business being afraid. Fear should be void of every child of God's life. But Pentecostal people, they have a way of covering up that fear. Now, other church folks don't have this particular problem, but I'm talking to you Pentecostal folks tonight. I was preaching a revival in a synagogue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I was conducting private interviews in the rabbi's office during the day. And I'll never forget a woman who came in there at 12 o'clock noon. My wife will recall this incident. She came in, and the first thing she did when she walked in that door was talk in tongues and shake a little bit. Ma 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 Glory! I said, sit down. She was covering up something. She had a fear. I could tell that she was bothered with a tormenting spirit, but she was covering it up with a spiritual accent. We Pentecostal people can do that. Just because we shout doesn't mean that there's not trouble there somewhere. Fear is a terrible thing. And David comes right out against it and said, fret not, you have no business being afraid. And I sat that woman down and I said, what is your problem? She said, Brother Sambach, I have arthritis and I come for prayer. So I wrote it down on the card, getting ready to give it to her. And I said, is there anything else? She said, well, my blood pressure's a little high. I said, is there anything else? She said, no, there ain't nothing else. She says, give me prayer right now. I said, I'm not giving it to you right now. I'm going to give it to you tonight. 
Oh, she said, I can't come tonight. I said, why can't you come tonight? She said, I just can't come. I said, there's nothing else wrong with you. She said, no, sir, nothing else wrong. And I'm weeding it out. She wouldn't tell me, so I'm digging at it. I'm a good listener. I knew there was something there. I put that card in her hand and I said, you bring that to me tonight and God will set you free and heal you of your disease. She said, I don't go out at night. I said, why don't you go out at night? She said, if you must know, I said, I must know. She said, well, I haven't been out of my house in 35 years after six o'clock at night. Here she is talking in tongues and she's a prisoner in her own house. Fear that grips the hearts of God's people. We have no business being afraid. I told her, I said, you bring that back tonight and God will deliver you and set you free. She said, I ain't going out for nobody. I said, you're already out. Stay here. Go next door and get a sandwich and eat it. And I said, my wife and I will take you home tonight after the service when God sets you free. I said, I'll unlock your door. I'll go in first. You can wait in the car with my wife. I'll look under the bed, under the couch, in all your closets. I'll make sure everything's safe. And then you can go in. She said, you'll do that? I said, anything to get you free, I'll do it. And I talked her into staying. I'll never forget it. And when I came back to preach that night, she was sitting on that front row all cowed over. You could tell that she was bound with a spirit of fear. Never been out in 35 years in her life. I called the prayer line that night and laid hands on her in the name of Jesus. And she went down under the power. That spirit left her and God set her free. I prayed for 500 more people. I went around looking for that woman because I promised her that my wife and I would take her home. I sent my wife out to the subway. I said, find her. I went another way. I said, I'll try the bus st stop. You try the subway stop. We did everything in our power, but we couldn't find her. I exhausted all the energy, but I knew what happened. And the next night she came back to that synagogue shouting and praising God. She stood up and said, I want to testify, preacher. I want to testify and tell the world that God set me free. Bound for 35 years. She said, I walked the whole way home. You've been to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was, I was preaching at 63rd and Market. She walked down Market Street to Broad, which is 14th. That's 50 blocks. Turn south and walk 50 more blocks down near the Navy Yard. And she said, I got home about 4 o'clock in the morning and put the key in the door. And then she said, I felt so good. I haven't been out for night for 35 years. I took the key out and walked the streets all night long just to let the devil know he's a liar. I'm free. Thank God I'm free. God has not given us the spirit of fear. If you are bound by this spirit, you need to find deliverance. And God has deliverance for you here tonight. He said that whatever we loose on earth, he will loose it in heaven. And whatever we bind on earth, he will bind it in heaven. Tonight is your night to find rest for your soul. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Rest in the Lord. For 35 years that woman was been in bondage. And in one split moment of time, God set her free. That's what I want you to know tonight. He is a deliverer. God is concerned about every one of us. He wants you to find peace. He wants you to have rest in your business, in your home, in your family. The devil has crept in, but he's got to creep right back out again. We're going to claim perfect rest for every one of God's children tonight. And this is your night to receive that perfect peace that can come only through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me, somebody? Psalm 37, 
Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. God is trying to bring every one of us into this place of perfect rest. But the first step is fear not. The second step, and I underline these words in my Bible, in the third verse it says, Trust in the Lord. The reason why we don't know how to trust in the Lord is because we're fearful so much. God is looking for a people who will learn how to trust Him. Every one of you know what it is to trust the Lord. I'll never forget reading the story of a man who decided that he was going to walk across a tightrope, Niagara Falls. Never forget it. As I read this thing, it thrilled my soul. And a crowd gathered. They published it in the paper that a man's going to stretch a tightrope across Niagara Falls and he's going to walk it. And the crowd was there. And he had the big old balancing rod in his hand. And he began to walk. Everybody was quiet as he went. One step at a time, balancing himself. Until he made it to the other side. Everybody applauded him. But he wasn't finished. He said, now I'm going to do it without the balancing rod. And he got on that tightrope. And he started out. Nothing but his own feet. No balancing rod as he began to step out. One step at a time. Balanced himself perfectly. And he made it to the other side. And they applauded again. He said, I'm not done yet. Now I'm going to wheel a wheelbarrow across this thing. And he got a wheelbarrow and put it on the tightrope. Everybody was dead earnest now. Can he do it? Can he make it? And finally he took that wheelbarrow and walked it across Niagara Falls. And on the other side, a group of people were applauding him and jumping up and down. And he saw a little boy there. And the little boy said, man, you're great. He said, son, do you think I can take it back again? He said, yes, sir. I believe you can take it back. He said, get in the wheelbarrow. Uh -oh. That's when you're going to find out whether you can trust him or not. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Trust in the Lord. Everybody can trust in the Lord when you got your pocket full of money. Everybody can trust in the Lord when you got friends all around you. Everybody can trust in the Lord when you're feeling good. But what are you going to do when pains and aches come and you can't rub two nickels against each other? I come to tell you, you've got to learn how to trust in the Lord. The devil may knock you down, but you're not out yet. God's not through with you. You've got to learn how to trust Him and He'll bring you through more than a conqueror because you've learned how to put your faith in God. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me, somebody? Yeah. Hallelujah! Some Christians can't stand the fire and they can't stand the pressure. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three young men, they had to face the test. And I come to Houston to tell you, you're going to have to face the test. Oh, it's got to come. My Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. I said of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He is a conqueror. He is a deliverer. And if you're being afflicted and you're going through the trial and you're going through the fire, God's been bragging on you. He's on your side. The devil will try to destroy your faith, but he cannot destroy it because you've learned how to stand on the naked word of God and God brings you through and you're more than a conqueror. Shout yes!
Chả thể quên khi cơn mưa đêm lại về Em lại quên lời thề và ta như đông chìm sâu Không cần mới em anh nhận màu yeah, ooh, Em chỉ cần mơ nó bay bay Chỉ còn là những cơn mưa vô ra Cho bên mơ em không mơ hay nhẹ yeah. Anh một đêm mơ Chỉ cần bên em không được cơn nhớ Và trôi không còn nhớ Và người ta bên nhau như là tớ
reckonings here The sound of death and in fear Oh So foggy, but I've never seen clearer I don't really think anyone can save me And honestly, I'm not really sure I want saving I like to be my own worst enemy There's no risk if you don't try at anything So I'ma just get by in everything See you in the next life, have to be a better me I don't think that my head's on straight Gotta flip it and grip it and go and get an x-ray What's wrong with me? I just feel way Pushing on my chest and it squeeze till I suffocate Better change my mindset, meditate It's pretty cool that I'm alive and have better days I could walk, see, here, I should celebrate Think I could change my mind, maybe elevate Living life, every day, late at night Not okay, all I want, and I pray All I need, for some better days Yeah, all I need, for some better days Cause all I want, and I pray I believe in the better yeah. day Kinda stuck between a rock and a hard place Do I work hard or live in my pace? You're only young once, yeah that's all great But I also want a future where I'm okay Living life is doing lots of cocaine Wait no, it's living with no shame Wait no, it's sleeping in on Sundays I guess it's different for each of us and that's okay Well I just wanna be happy How to get there, hmm, glad that you asked me I think it's different for everyone Some of us need work, others need fun Some of us need purpose to overcome But try to do what you love when it's said and done Cause there's so many differences in each of us Trust your gut, it can show you what you want Living life, every day, late at night Not okay, all I want, and I pray All I need, are some better days Yeah, all I need, are some better days Cause all I want, and I pray I believe in a better day Living life, every day Late at night, not okay, all I want, and I pray, all I need are some better days, yeah, all I need are some better days, cause all I want, and I pray, I believe in the better days.